Well, this has been an interesting day, and it's only getting interestinger. <laughs> Something like that. It's only getting better. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Fantasy football today here. It's 4.23 p.m. What a day. Eastern. What a day. What a day. I think this is so fun. I mean, from, from a work standpoint, right? I mean, this is a blast for me. I don't know how you guys are feeling about it, but I love it. Oh yeah, writing seven hundred stories has been a blast. <laughs> well, I don't, you know, I don't have to do that. But just uh, people, players' values changing, and and uh, this is what it's all about. But how about this? Five of the top seven running backs in ADP from last year, fantasy pros PPR ADP, could probably will be on another team next year. Uh, Eckler, Barkley, Pollard, Jacobs, Derrick Henry. They were all top seven, and those five assuming Eckler and Henry end up on a different team, we'll be on new teams. Seems like it now. I mean, I don't think Henry's going back to the Titans. And They've already like ruled him out. The Chargers have their guy. <laughs> the Chargers? Me, me. No, they don't have their guy. Gus Edwards going to the Chargers. That's just happening. I mean, since we started doing a mic check, uh, like the two, two or three things have happened. So it's been, been wild. Uh, let's play value up, down, or the same. Kirk Cousins to Atlanta. Value up, down, or the same. Same. I kept it as the same, but he was not a top twelve quarterback to begin with. If he's if he's healthy and takes the first snap in training camp, he might be twelve for me. Uh, same as what though? Same as what he was a week yeah. ago, or yeah. same as the this perception, morning. not the same as how he finished. Okay, not as good as it would have been if you were on Minnesota, right? Correct. Correct. Um, no, I mean I think it's the same. Think so? Yeah, I mean he's stepping into a situation with. A similar play caller coming mm -hmm. from the same tree, from Sean McVay's tree. He's stepping into great weapons around him. Uh, obviously unproven in Atlanta by comparison to Minnesota, but I think an easier division to play in. And the uh, the potential to still continue to put up good numbers. Easier exactly. division I can buy into. Receiving core being even close to the same, I cannot buy into that. He had an awesome group in Minnesota. Yeah, I think he's going to have an awesome group in in Atlanta because of I what think he's going to be a good them. group. I don't think it'll be. It's nothing like what he had in Minnesota. Well, from a pedigree standpoint, it's better. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. That's true. From, uh, from the eyeball test and from what we've seen from these players over yeah, the yeah, but you're talking about an eyeball test of, of 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 those guys playing with crappy quarterbacks. Let's see what those guys look like with Jaron Hall starting 17 games. Yeah, sure, it's a fair point. Well, all right, but no matter how good Drake London is, he's not Justin Jefferson. He won't be Justin Jefferson, but he was expected to be better than Justin Jefferson based on how he was drafted. <laughs> he was drafted higher. When he was drafted, I don't think he was expected to be better than what Jeff Justin Jefferson had already not. become. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, also, you know, they're not going to throw as much as the Vikings because basically nobody does. But, you know, I feel like caught up in the euphoria of the Falcons finally getting a quarterback and Cousins getting almost $100 million guaranteed. I saw 100 then I saw 90 but four years, big deal. He's 36 years old coming off a torn Achilles. Are we are we sort of overlooking it? Or he'll be 36 in August. I don't know what the Achilles injury means for a quarterback. I mean, we don't really know. No, they, they can usually forward. come back from that injury. It's it's not like Kirk Cousins is known for his rushing or explosiveness. He'll I know. Be, he'll be, as long as he recovers in time, he'll be fine. But this deal was great for his bank account. I don't know if it's as good for Oh, he was getting paid no matter where he was going. Yeah, I know. Hundred million guaranteed, four more years in the league. It just it feels it feels like Minnesota is stuck right now. Like if if I'm the Vikings, like I'm trying anything possible to move up in the draft from eleven. Oh yeah, uh, Josh Jacobs to Green Bay value up, down, or the same? Up, up. As soon and as Aaron way, Jones got cut, it was up. Right, that was the second part. Aaron Jones released by the Packers. I, before he got released, I, it was really looking like a whoa. This is a horrible day for running backs. <laughs> but that was okay. Uh, He's the so, biggest winner. Yes. Hold on, we're not at that segment yet. Saquon Barkley to the Eagles. Value up, down, or the same? Slightly yeah. down. Yeah, down a smidge is what I was going to say. Who do you like better, Barkley or Jacobs? Jacobs. I like Jacobs better than Barkley. Tony Pollard to the Titans, value up, down, or the same? Down. Up a little. DeAndre Swift to the Bears. Same. Uh, down a little. Did you know that the Bears, by some by PFF and ESPN run block win rate, 
they have a top five run blocking unit. Like they have a very, they are a good offensive line. Uh, it's not that big of a downgrade leaving the Eagles to go to the Bears, according to those two metrics. Uh, Devin Singletary to the Giants. Yeah! Up, down, and the same. <laughs> are you going on the season ticket waiting list? <laughs> I work Sundays. Or you, I work, yeah. You're in line to see Daniel Jones and Devin Singletary in the same backfield against the Cowboys and Eagles defenses. Mm-hmm. Hooray. Uh, I'm going to say same. Yeah, I, I'm sure they're going to add somebody. He'll end up being about the same. He has led his team in rushing all five years of his career. Buffalo four times and Houston once. He has yet to get to 900 yards. 898 yards was a career high last season. Uh, can, we, can we be back in on Damian Pierce? They don't sign anybody? No. All right, well, here's the one. If, if if things stay as they are, would you rather have Damian Pierce or Devin, or, or Devin Singletary? If things stay as they are, um, Pierce. Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> Antonio pass, pass on Patriots. both. Oh, no. I, oh, hold, okay. Antonio Gibson to the Patriots. And then after this, I have to get up for a second. I'll tell you why. But go ahead. I don't have to go to the bathroom. Oh, gosh. You don't have to announce it. I don't have to. I'm, I'm good. Are, are you just going to the part of the podcast where everybody's going to get up to go to the bathroom because we're going to talk about Antonio Gibson? No, I mean, value up down to the same for him. Gibson, the Patriots? Yeah. Uh, same. Same. And then finally, now I have to get up to get the Magic 8-Ball. Because Gabe Davis is going to the Your Jaguars. Magic 8-Ball's in the bathroom? No, it's right over here. I wasn't going to the bathroom. I just oh. had to get up. Yeah. I made before the show. Um, <laughs> okay. Super. Magic 8-Ball. Gabe Davis to the Jaguars. Is this good for Gabe Davis? Yes. He's asking the eight ball. So it shall be, says the eight ball. What do you think? Number three? Is he the number three, number four receiver? Got Well, it's incomplete. We got to see what happens with Ridley, right? Yes. If Ridley comes back and Davis is replacing Zay Jones, it's great. I wouldn't want Gabe Davis on my fantasy team. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to want Gabe Davis on my fantasy team if Ridley doesn't come back either. All right. We still have Eckler and Henry still out there. But uh, so what are the big ones? It's Eckler, Henry, Marquise Brown, Ridley, Alvin Ridley, yeah, and the Justin Fields trade, Joe Flacco, <laughs> and the Justin Fields trade, right? Uh, it's been an eventful day. So, uh, real quick, I just want to tell you about our new oh, now Aaron Jones, our new right? Yeah, it's true. Uh, he finished strong, he's he's old, but uh, he's he finished very strong, and T uh, Higgins trade too. T Higgins is yes, T Higgins, that's another item we have to get to T Higgins requesting a trade perhaps just kind of will give them a little, light a little fire under them to give them a long-term deal um all right we would like to extend a warm welcome to the newest podcast in our CBS sports family and it's basketball time college basketball oh we are going to have a bracket challenge by the way so get ready for that but beyond the arc is an NBA podcast with hosts John Gonzalez Bill Ryder and Ashley Nicole Moss Regular appearances from NBA champion Avery Johnson. It's a daily NBA discussion on Beyond the Arc. Download and follow Beyond the Arc wherever you find this podcast. All right, let's do the biggest winners and losers of the day. I don't know if you want to... You, if you'd like to include Russell Wilson, Jerry Judy, all that stuff, feel free. Oh, yeah, huge winners right there. Oh, I mean, Pickens and... I mean, that. I mean those news items. Feel free. But uh, who's the biggest winner so far in free agency? We mentioned the big name guys. is Josh Jacobs. Yeah. Jacobs going to Green Bay, be the lead back there. Theoretically have the exact same role that he had in Las Vegas, but it'll be in Green Bay. And in an offense that's young and a lot of firepower, not going to see as many stacked boxes. He's been dominant near the goal line. That's a problem that the Packers have had the past couple of years with their running backs and really overall. And so he fits a need for them on top of basically being in the same type of skill set as Aaron Jones. And he's 20 pounds stronger and he's three years younger. I think he's a huge winner. Uh, It wouldn't surprise me if you saw him go late round one in non PPR and round two and half in full PPR. I'll, I'll go different. I'll just say somebody different and say Drake London. I mean, obviously cousins has had great production from his number one receiver. Um, I looked at it earlier since going to Minnesota, 
He got two years. This is just at least 14 and a half PPR points. So he got two years of that from Stefan Diggs, one year of that from Adam Thielen, and four years of that from Justin Jefferson. And so London, you know, I think we'll be somewhere in between that of what Jefferson's high end performance was, which I think his best year was 21 and a half PPR points. And um, Diggs in the low end of that, which was 14 and a half. So that's from 2018 on. And so London has now the chance. He has he has 11 games in 33. He has 11 of 33 games with just 13 PPR points in his career, Drake London. So I think he's going to get closer to 15 PPR points per game and will be a borderline number one receiver. 13 or more, you're saying? Th- at least 13 PPR points, yes. And in a third of his games. Yeah, that's a, that's true. He should be better than that with Cousins. All right, who would you I, have? I don't think he'll be as good as Justin Jefferson. Or no. Close no. to that. No. And, we, and, you know, right now, I don't know if Justin Jefferson is wide receiver what for you guys, by the way. Um, right now he is wide receiver three for me. Makes sense. Yeah. So who would you rather have? Which combo would you rather have? Bijan Robinson and DK Metcalf or Josh Jacobs and Drake London? The Bijan and Metcalf. Who would you rather have Metcalf or London? London. I think London might make more sense. Okay, so that's I'm giving you the better receiver and, and worse running back because you're taking Bijan over Jacobs, right? Correct. Yeah. I I mean, I look, I'm trying to find angles here. Um, Cousins, if I had to describe Kirk Cousins, he's been a starter for nine years. I think the best thing about him is he doesn't necessarily have a tendency. He throws to his best players, and I like that about him. But he has only had one season where he's been higher than 16th in running back target rate. Throws a lot to his wide receivers. If he has a good tight end, he'll throw a lot to his tight ends. Jordan Reed, TJ Hawkinson, for example. Hasn't really thrown a lot to his running backs. Well, in, in, in his time with Minnesota, three seasons for Dalvin Cook with at least 40 receptions. So one year over 50. Good. So, and, and that's with Dalvin missing time. So I don't know what it would be on a you know catch a per catch basis, uh, you know, game by game. Yeah. So Bijan, I think, will be fine. I, I think 50 catches as well within the region. Remember, you know, so... To go back to uh, which receiving core is better, um, there's no significant number two wide receiver in Atlanta right now. And so that is a big plus for Bijan. Yeah. Well, there's Pitts, but no, I'm talking but, about receiver. Like there's yeah, a number yeah. one receiver, there's a legit tight end, and there's a, a pass catching running back that has easy 50 catch potential. Okay. Um, as far as Jacobs in London go, how how concerned are you about the season that Josh Jacobs just had? What do you mean in terms of? I mean, he sucked. He averaged three point five yards per carry. He is coming off a season. He's had. He's been in the league for five years. He's been a workhorse every year of his career, and he's been per game top twelve in PPR one time. He's been top fifteen. Four times, but he's usually around 14, 15, something like that. Right, he's right around 14. He was the best running back in fantasy, arguably, in 2023. I think, 2022, rather. I think he was third per game in full PPR, second per game in in non-PPR. But that has been the big outlier for him. So you say he might go at the end of round one. You know, it might. I think it's probably round two, right? Like 80. I mean, not a round one pick for me, no. Tell me why he should be a round two pick when he's, finished top 12 per game once in his career. Like I said, top 15, four times in his career. Uh, Does not have a single receiving touchdown in his entire career, which is weird. But tell me why Josh Jacobs should be a second-round pick. Good player with great opportunity and a good offense. Starts right there. There aren't a lot of guys that are like this left at running back in the league. And I think he's going to have that opportunity even if the Packers draft a running back. Say they take a, a guy in round three. I, I think it'll be fine. I think that secondary back will get eight to 11 touches per game. Jacobs gets the rest. It just makes all the sense in the world that if they're, if they're going to sign him and they're going to pay him, theoretically, I, I don't know what the contract is, but it's got to be more than Swift. It's got to be more than uh, Pollard. I, I think he's going to end up being a big-time factor for the Packers. He's a good fit for their scheme. I think that offensive line has room to get better. I think he's going to be just fine. And I think he'll be somewhere between like 14 and a half and 15 and a half PPR points per game. I can't, I can't take him over the elite receivers and maybe even like where I get hung up is like Chris Olave versus Josh Jacobs. Um, 
I'm going to take him over Devontae Adams. I think that's pretty easy. Other wide receivers that are in that 15 PPR range, I might take that type of receiver because I think they'll they'll get more catches, obviously, than Jacobs will. I think Rashid Jacobs. Is, I do think that Jacobs is in a really good spot. I think he can find a lot of touchdowns as long as he stays healthy. He's a candidate to get over 1,500 total yards. Hard to find those guys in round two. Rasheed Rice or Josh Jacobs. I think Rice is going to get company in Kansas City. I'll take Jacobs. Yeah, I would take Jacobs. Jacobs is definitely a round two pick. I mean, you know, as as Dave just laid it out for you, but it's like, you know, you go back to some of the drafts that we've done already, not that that's the best barometer, but, you know, when you start comparing him to Isaiah Pacheco and Barkley now and um, James Cook and Rashad White and, you know, these other know. guys, like even I, I think you can make a case, you know, him versus Jameer Gibbs, knowing that Gibbs has David Montgomery to compete with. You know, so I would probably lean, at least right now, Kyron Williams over Jacobs, depending on what happens there, even though Jacobs is a better talent. But Kyron's in, I think, a still a better situation. Uh, but that's kind of the comp. You know, so he's not going to go, I think, past top 15 overall. But he'll be around to pick for me. Okay. Josh Jacobs has 197 catches in his career, not a single touchdown. And he has, this is unbelievable to me, nine catches on third down. That is, uh, he just not a third. He wasn't down. used on third downs the I past know. Couple of seasons, like that. That and that just makes his workload uh, all the more like crazy. I think I, I'm not sure about 2022. I know last year it was Abdullah. No, it was, he wasn't the third down back in 2022 either. Right. So but, and that was the big breakout year for him. 19 PPR points per game, and he still didn't play third downs. Are you pushing? I'd be mildly surprised if the Packers didn't play him on third downs. Are you going to push uh, Drake London up to the Devontae Smith, T. Higgins, assuming he's on the Bengals, Jalen Waddle group? Yes, for sure. Ahead, same as? Uh, I would take him over Devontae Smith. I probably would take him right after Waddle and Higgins. Okay. Dave, what do you think in there? Uh, it's going to be a mix. I've got Smith ahead of him. I'm debating him versus Pittman. I might take him over Pittman. I just think the quarterback is, is too big of a difference maker there. If Cousins top, is healthy, I'm going to be very bullish on Drake London. It, year top three, 50 pick. Year three. Top what? Top 50. Oh, easily. Top 36 for me. Ooh, okay. Yeah. There's the... I, yeah. I, I, yeah, no, there's not much to say. I don't think we know how good Drake London can be. That's the bottom right. line. We just have I mean, no his idea. His quarterbacks have been so bad. He was in a run centric system. Like everything was just working against him. And so he's going to be a target hog for a quarterback that's done wonders for guys like this. He doesn't do anything after the catch. I don't know if that you should bother that, him. Yeah. I mean, a lot of his catches one of the are worst. He's one like, of the worst. Yeah, I know. But he's he ran a lot of hitch routes, comeback routes dig routes like and, he, and he's not like he's explosive but he's also six four so he's explosive for a guy his size yes yeah and so he'll get caught um plenty of times but yeah. physical rangey type of receiver that can line up anywhere definitely getting an upgrade in targets what i should say is that he hasn't done much after the catch again don't know if that will change but he isn't like he's not a burner but he's terrific makes a lot of contested catches gets yeah. open People love Drake London. It's exciting. It's exciting for him. All right, let's take a break. We have a lot more players to talk about here. I don't even know who's your favorite Titans running back. We'll find out after this break on Fantasy Football Today. The blackout mystery. Welcome to March Madness. Oh, you just never know in the tournament who is going to shine. Stream March Madness live on any device, anywhere, and be ready for anything. Oh. All right, let's see. What we got uh, Jacobs was four years, forty-eight million, according to Rappaport and Pelosaro. Nice. Do we know how much is guaranteed? Does not say. Okay. Justina Anderson is saying that the Commanders and Raiders have made preliminary inquiries on Austin Eckler. Her source. So we're following that. Who's the biggest loser? Jacobs in London were the biggest winners today. Who's the biggest loser, fellas? I mean, Aaron Jones is obvious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he lost his job. <laughs> But he could still he could end up in a place where he's yeah, right now he's a loser. He's a loser, right? Who? Tajay Spears. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it sucks for him. You know that I, I think we had some hope that there was a chance he could be the the lead guy there. Um, 
in some some committee, but the lead guy. And I think the the contract and compensation to Tony Pollard suggests he's going to come in as the lead guy. Um, homecoming for Pollard, by the way. He grew up in Memphis, born in Memphis, and went to Memphis. Um, so that's a cool story. Um, it feels like the Vikings across the board. You know, I mean, yeah. losing losing the the chance at you know, it it it, it felt as if, and, and maybe we have Thomas jump on here if you want. Um, you know, losing losing cousins and not having for whatever it's worth the fallback options of Russell Wilson or even a Mac Jones, you know, what can they get in the draft at 11? I hope somebody good because there's so much to love about this offense though, you know, between the play caller and the weapons, you hope the right quarterback goes there. It'd be very surprising if the bears trade Justin Fields to the Vikings. Oh man. It is hard to have Jefferson at wide receiver one or number one overall, which you guys don't I think you said you have him third, but I'm sure a lot of people would have him one, maybe not the majority. Well, as Thomas pointed out in our chat, he did do well with Nick Mullins, you know. So a, a guy that's going to throw some, you know, uh, jump balls and, and just give him an opportunity to make, go make plays. He's certainly capable of doing that. So you know, there there's there's still that potential, but you know, those type of quarterbacks get figured out quickly, and it's easy to t- sort of try and take away the best of what Jefferson does if that's possible. But you know, that's what teams will try to do. So you know, I'm trying to think if there's another quarterback that that's potentially a trade chip that will still keep Jefferson afloat, you know, like the Jacoby Brissett's of the world. Not that that's the yeah, guy. Minshew. Figure, but, huh? Minshew. Minshew. Yeah. Same type of guy. Uh, yeah. They were saying uh, on Twitter, Sam Darnold could be an option too. Okay. And obviously I don't like that for reality, but he would probably be okay for fantasy purposes. Like he was, our, he was all right. Or JJ was all right with Mullins as quarterback. So yeah. Well, Mullins I mean, you got- crazy. Like Mullins threw for a ton of yards. But he was, but like he played one game with Josh Dobbs and he was terrible. Uh, I remember the couple of years ago he played a game without Cousins uh, on like a Sunday night game. Yeah, Sean Mann and he's all fine. And, yeah, and, and Jefferson was terrible. So uh, we talked about this a lot last year. These wide receivers, they're not necessarily quarterback proof. If you look at Justin Fields and what DJ Moore did with Tyson Bajant, for example, there's often a downgrade with the backup. But- I think the difference is like scheming for Justin Jefferson than DJ Moore. I feel like it's kind of been proven over the course with Kevin O'Connell that he can get it done. And I know it was with Josh, Josh Dobbs, like he's not a passer. So I would, you know, I would Azer stat that and take that away. (laughs) It's also a, a in season replacement as opposed to, Full season replacement, you know, so right. uh, yeah, for sure. training camp and all those things, you know, that that's a big difference than, hey, you're being thrown in, in an injury replacement in game and then having to, you know, be the guy for a couple weeks. That's tough. But you know what, Schaefer, there was that one time where Jefferson really struggled. Um, was that playoff game against the Giants? Seven yeah. catches, 47 hey, yards. The presence isn't there anymore. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, any other losers? So, so yeah. How do you feel about um, Spears and Pollard, and when they should be drafted right now? I mean, the, this is an offensive line that's clearly still a work in progress. Uh, they did just agree to terms with Lloyd Cushenberry today, center from the Broncos. Uh, our Jonathan Jones broke that news. So we'll see. You know how that continues to you know unfold for them. But full year of Will Levis. Uh, obviously, new system in place with Brian Callahan. Uh, his dad is going to retool that offensive line and make it better just based on scheme alone. So that's huge. But, uh, you know, if you look at Pollard and, and you break the season in half and take him on his word that he says he felt better from week 11 on coming back from the broken leg four of his final six games in the regular season, um, I think it was 15 or more PPR points over that span. So being healthy, it could be a, you know, a big factor for him. Uh, he'll be 27, 26 right now. He's still the better of the two. If you're looking at it from who's going to get the workload. I'm still going to draft a lot of Tajay Spears just because I think he'll get enough opportunities in a shared situation that, you know, you can might get the lottery ticket if something happens to, to Pollard, but you have to be patient with him. But I think round five is probably the right spot for Pollard, you know, just based on how running backs will probably get drafted. He'll be a back end, you know, around 20th, you know, number two running back. And, and again, Spears will be somebody that, you know, you take in that round eight, round nine range if you're looking for upside. Mm. I'm so high on Tajay Spears. I mean, I was. I just think he's so damn good that, uh, Dave, I think I'd rather wait. Because I, I don't know. I just don't see how Pollard could be great, you know, no. with this team. And what I think could Minshew end up to the Raiders, happening. by the way. Minshew to the Raiders? Yep. Oh, wow. Let's get Heath on. 
<laughs> so uh, my hunch is that Pollard will still be the lead back there, but they they can mix and match those two. Just because Spears was the third down back last year doesn't mean that he has to be the third down back again this year. Both these guys can catch. Both these guys, when they're healthy, can move well, avoid tackles well. Um, I, I kind of agree. I, I think that if Ty J Spears is going a couple of rounds after Pollard, I think he's the one I'd rather have as well. It's actually a pretty big deal, Minshew, to the Raiders. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, how about DeAndre Swift? So DeAndre Swift going to the Chicago Bears, as I mentioned, very good offensive line, at least in terms of run blocking. And he's been a very productive running back. I'll just give you his numbers. Uh, Swift. Eh, whatever. Who cares? He I was mean, he like, one yeah, he season was, with over 1,000 yards, and it was last season. 20 rushing. Yes. 24th per game. Uh, but he's always been a factor in the, in the receiving game as well. Uh, anyway, that was Wait, 24th. Who knows if that'll happen in Chicago now. Yeah. With only six touchdowns last year, five rushing one receiving. Uh, oh, and we really have got to get into Barkley. Okay. After this, we're going to talk about Barkley to the <laughs> Eagles. Uh, so anyway, your thoughts on Swift, would you rather have Swift or oh, Swift or Pollard, I guess. Pollard. I have him back to back. I I think I'm going to take Pollard as long as Fields is the quarterback. And if it's Caleb Williams, same thing. Okay, let's go to Barkley. <laughs> <laughs> We're just ditching Swift. No, nah, we should. Okay. Roshan's a loser. Khalil Herbert's a loser. Yeah. Until Swift, if he gets hurt, they'll be back in our lives. It's an interesting signing. I mean, both Swift has had some great metrics, but Herbert's actually had better metrics than Swift. And Swift, you for wonder if they try to trade one of them, just you know, get a sixth or seventh round pick out of it. Yeah, and we we kind of. I mean, I think the thinking well, might be a little up. on Swift. He just he was never a workhorse, never capable of it, and he really held up nicely last year. Uh, so it's funny. I mean, I feel like the Philadelphia the offensive line might be so good that it, it helps these guys. They get so many yards before contact. But, um, yeah, I mean, Herbert's had a really good career, too. So it's not going to be a it's, – it's, it's, it sucks. It, it's not not ideal. But um, Barkley to the Eagles. So, on one hand, you got the quarterback stealing all those touchdowns. On the other hand, you just have a much better offense. I mean, Barkley had six carries inside the five-yard line last year. Six. He'll have more than that, even if Jalen Hurts is – vulturing touchdowns. They're going to have so many more opportunities. Uh, how much does he have left in the tank? I don't know. But what do you guys think the chances of Saquon Barkley being first round, being a top five running back are? By the end of the season, he's not going to draft yeah. it that way. No, no, by the end of the season. I mean, look, this is the biggest investment they've made in a running back. I'm trying to think maybe in the Howie Roseman era. You know, I mean, yes. they made the trade for, for Jay Ajayi, you know, in the, in the first Super Bowl. And... You know, Miles Sanders was a, was a draft pick, so they didn't have to pay him very much. They let him go when it was time to pay him. Um, Swift was a you know a, a cheap addition via trade last year, and they didn't pay him. And so this is this is kind of a you know deviation from what they doing what they've been doing. So you wonder if with Kelsey retiring, is the tush push still in play to the same level? Uh, I I would be surprised if it completely goes away because it's been so successful. But now they have a little bit of a different running back there. And and again, you know, the other part of this is the the role in the passing game because we just haven't seen that from Jalen Hurts. Well, is that what maybe Kellen Moore brings to the table and helps in that regard in terms of featuring Barkley a little bit more in that arena as well? So I still think he's he's a very safe pick as long as you count on him staying healthy at his age and injury concerns. But um, after Jacobs, again, going back to that same group of guys that we mentioned before, you know, I would take him ahead of Pacheco. I would take him ahead of Rashad White. I would take him ahead of James Cook. I think, you know, still, like you said, great offensive line and just better offense for him in general. So as long as his passing game numbers don't crater, he should still be a very good fantasy option. When's the last time Philadelphia had a running back with 50 or more catches? Miles Sanders, first or second season. So it's been a little while. That's yep. not with Jalen Hurts, right? Right. Correct. So that makes me nervous. The age makes me nervous, but I'm willing to overlook it for a talent like Saquon Barkley. What happens when they get inside the five, especially the two and the one? That makes me nervous because like, the one thing that they've been able to consistently do is push that tush. And Hertz has done amazingly well with it. 
I think it's valid. If Kelsey's retired, are they still as effective doing it? I, I don't know if we're going to get the answer to that question until the season starts. But I think he's there to take a lot of pressure off the quarterback. I think he's there to be um, an effective component of the offense. They paid what they had to pay to get him. And, uh, yeah, I think he could I, – I, I'm a little worried about, like, 12 touchdowns. But 13, 1,400 total yards, I think he's in that range. I think he can be pretty good. All right, I'm going to give the Barkley case. I'm going to get everybody fired up for Saquon Barkley. If you're not fired up for Saquon Barkley, get ready. Get some water to pour on you because you're going to get fired up right now. Um, okay, you do have Miles Sanders in 2022 who had 11 rushing touchdowns as an Eagle. Last year, you had only five from DeAndre Swift, but there were five or six times that he was down at the one-yard line and that was followed by a tush push on every single time. So he was very close. He was very unlucky. And meanwhile, if you just look at just take away Jalen Hurts' carries inside the five-yard line and just look at the Eagles running back carries inside the five-yard line, they're pretty much blowing away what Saquon Barkley's done over the last three seasons. If not blowing away, they're at least equaling or bettering, right? So he's just, they're just going to score so many points than what this pathetic Giants team has done. The Giants were solid in 2022, but they weren't the Eagles. He's, there are just going to be so many more opportunities for points. Meanwhile, Barkley looks like a pretty inefficient running back lately. Two of the last three years, he's been under four yards per carry. I still see him with flashes where he show, he is really good. He can run away from people. And this, he, look, maybe if Kelsey's absence is a huge deal, that could be the case. But they're bringing back four or five linemen. They are going to create opportunities for Saquon Barkley, and he is going to bounce back. This might He's getting up there in age. This might be his last great year. But and I would say he hasn't really had a great year, a truly great year since his rookie season. But this might be the second best year of his career. I think end, he could, end of year two when he came back from the injury. No, the first year back from the injury was terrible. It was 2022, his second year back from the injury that was good. But it that was after the ACL. Yeah, his first year back from the ACL. He I'm was talking abused. about the end of the the hand, uh, ankle injury. Oh, the end of that year. Yeah, he was yeah. good. But overall, as a full season, it wasn't right. Yeah, yeah. I think the thing you, you look you 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 made the, the you made a strong case for it. The it's it's again, what will his role be in the passing game? Because that will take him from good to elite if he's if he's can he get can he get 40 catches 40 that's what i was going to throw out because i think i think swift had 39 last year. okay so 40 is well within reach can he get to 50 because he's a better pass catcher than swift i don't think so and then and then i don't know how you guys feel but we should probably talk about it. does he affect everyone else on the team i mean is this a sign should this is a warning sign for jalen hurts well the, for jalen hurts um i don't think it's ever a bad thing to put good players around you you know so uh does it take away a couple of rushing touchdowns? Yeah, probably, but maybe helps in terms of the passing game if they do use him in that role, and takes a little bit of the beating that Jalen Hurts takes away, uh, takes a little bit off of you know him having to, to take some of those those hits. I, I I think you know it's a, a little bit of a downgrade I think to the pass catchers because again of what his potential role could be. So you know if you're if you're comparing maybe AJ Brown to Amara St. Brown and Puka Nakua and some of those other guys after the top three or four, um, then maybe you put him behind those guys if you're concerned. And, and again to your question earlier about Devontae Smith. Uh, I'll take Drake London over him because I think there's more upside for him, and I'll take Waddle and, and T. Higgins over him, depending on where Higgins plays. But I don't think Hertz is uh, is is in a downgrade with Kellen Moore as the offense coordinator, and now the addition of Saquon Barkley. So just another, you know, better player on the field. So I, I'm I'm perfectly fine with Hertz still as QB two. Didn't Hertz play through an injury last year? I don't know if we were told about it, he but I think he's playing through. Yeah, knee injury. In he was playing with a knee brace on. Yeah. This, maybe this move and the light bulb kind of went off over my head when you were talking, Jamie. Maybe this move is being done to protect Hertz and to give Hertz to give the Eagles another option, take some work off of Hertz. And that makes sense. So I'm going to ask this question What are the odds that both of these guys, we can expect Hertz to see fewer rushing touchdowns if Saquon's there and healthy? What are the odds that both of them have 10 rushing touchdowns in 2024? Saquon and who? And Hurts. Jalen Hurts. Both have 10? 10. Um, 35%. It, it happened two years ago with Sam. Hurts was how many touchdowns last year? 15 or 16. Like 15. How many did he yeah, have the 10, year 10, when Sam had 11? 10 and 10 is easy to see. He had like 13 that year. Okay. Something so like that. Maybe they go back in that direction. And yeah, maybe he, they just try yeah. and 
take some of that wear and tear off of their quarterback. They need that guy. And so if they're going to do that, that does mean more carries, fewer passes, or more passes to the running back. But we haven't seen that in the Jalen Hurts era very much. Yeah, I, I'll say, and if you're curious, uh, what would happen to Jalen Hurts? I, I took away two fantasy points per game from him for each of the last three seasons to see where he would finish. And that to me, that is six rushing touchdowns over the course of a season. So it's kind of a weird exercise. It's not like he's going to put up the same exact stats. And we probably shouldn't even look at three years ago. That was before the A.J. Brown but uh, signing, but uh, or trade, rather. If he lost six rushing touchdowns per season, that's basically two fantasy points per game. In four point per passing touchdown leagues over the last three years, Jalen Hurts would have gone from per game, per game, QB7 to QB10, QB1 to QB3, and QB2 to QB4. In six point per passing touchdown leagues, he would have gone from seven to 12, from QB1 to QB3, and from QB2 to QB5. So it's a kind of a big deal. But, but that's also not factoring in whatever he gets from Saquon as a pass catcher. It's true. I was just I was just giving him basically his exact same numbers minus six rushing touchdowns each year because he's still that would still be a ton of rushing rushing touchdowns. He's the only quarterback who's ever had consecutive years with double digit rushing touchdowns, and he's done it three years in a row. Uh, hate to interrupt the momentum here. I got to take another break here. The Eagles also made a big splash on defense. So did the Vikings. We'll talk about those signings. Okay. We'll talk- the, who am I missing with the pack? Oh, Xavier McKinney, right? Yeah. Um, will you just stop picking, the stop picking out the Giants, please, for God's sake? And the, I guess, and the Bengals. It's been a very interesting day for interdivision moves. Who the Bengals get? Geno Stone. Yeah, right. Safety from the Ravens. Yes. Hmm? Um, all right. Uh, we'll be right back. We'll be right back after this break on fantasy football today. Who's in? Who's out? Let the madness begin. The NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Selection Show on CBS and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Don't forget about our Bracket Challenge. You can win a spot in the podcast league if you win the Bracket Challenge. Hooray. Uh, Gardner Minshew to the Raiders. This is uh, pretty interesting. He's been pretty good for receivers. Great year from DJ Chark. Uh, great year for Michael Pittman. Filled in admirably in two games you know, for A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith a couple of years ago with the Eagles. So if... Devontae Adams is still on the Raiders, and Gardner Minshew is his starting quarterback. Jamie, what would that mean for Adams? Would you take him as a top 30 pick? No. Dave? Just inside my top 30. Okay. Am I wrong for liking Minshew for Adams? The one thing he doesn't do is throw a lot of touchdowns, but he'll target the hell out of Adams, I think. Yeah, he... Yeah, this, he this, this offense... <laughs> Gardner Minshew lost Josh Jacobs. So we're talking about Zamir White, who's a big Zemir winner. White, by the way. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, Minshew and Zamir White are the new quarterback slash running back for the Raiders. Like this feels could be potentially awful for Devontae Adams. Um, I, I don't think he's got a shot to reach the upside that like, what did he do last year? Devonte Adams. He was at 15.6 PPR points per game. 16.3 PPR points per game after McDaniels got fired. Most of that was with Aiden O'Connell. It wouldn't surprise me if O'Connell and, and Minshew were maybe close statistically in some categories. I hate that these are his quarterbacks, but I like that Pittman averaged 10.1 targets per game with Minshew, 16.5 PPR points per game, 9.3 non-PPR points per game. I, 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 I kind of have the feeling that Adams will come in a little under there. Uh, we just see the Jaguars just signed or will sign Devin Duvernay, a wide receiver, two years, 12 and a half million. And does that matter? No, but what does that mean? For, what does it mean for Calvin Ridley, though? Now that they've signed Gabe Davis and they've just spent six million a year. I mean, on it, it always kind of felt like they were moving on from Ridley because of the, the compensation they had to give to Atlanta. So, well, but they've got to give it anyway. They've got yeah, to, they give to give it, it anyway. either way. No, but it was going to be a second round pick if they sign. If him. they sign him on the eleventh or, or before the league New Year starts, once it's the thirteenth, it's a third round pick. Right, it's still a third round pick. I'm saying. And we have potentially have Christian Kirk as a big winner. We'll see what happens there. And yep. and uh, all right, so Devontae Adams, we talked about Let's other news. Evan Ingham, yeah, we got Barkley to the Eagles, Jacobs to the Packers, Pollard to the Mac Titans, Jones and Gabe Davis is the new Montana to rest. <laughs> DeAndre Swift to the Bears. Charger signing Gus Edwards, Jamie. 
I hope that's not all that they do with their backfield, but uh, reuniting him with uh, Greg Roman, you know, so those two were in Baltimore together. And it's, he's he's going to be a factor, you know, so I, I know um, we're hoping, you know, rookie, maybe Corum, you know, just to tie in the Michigan scenario with John Harbaugh, but uh, Jim Harbaugh, excuse me. Um, but uh, I hope somebody else joins him in the backfield. If he's going to be the lead running back, it's going to be gross. You know, he'll, he'll score touchdowns and he'll be probably five yards per carry like he always is, but no work in the passing game whatsoever and just doesn't feel like this is the type of answer for a run centric system that we're looking for. Gibson to the Patriots. You know, Brian Robinson played one game without Antonio Gibson last year, and he had seven catches. We'll see. I'm in the. I'm very excited about him next year. You are. Yeah, I mean, um, Anthony Lynn now the running back coordinator there, um, running backs coach there. He's done very well with the running backs that he's worked with, just coming from San Francisco. Not that he needed to do much with Christian McCaffrey, but um, it's a it's a pretty good track record for where he's been. You mentioned it the the time that Gibson hasn't played there. Now, if Eckler goes in, I think Josina Anderson right said that. Yeah. Washington's in on Eckler that would, you know, con considerably crush Robinson's opportunity, maybe across the board, but certainly as a pass catcher. So you have to keep an eye on that. But if he's, you know, dealing with um, not necessarily the most significant second running back, uh, uh, Robinson was a big winner, for me, would be a big winner for me. And Devin Singletary to the Giants. Is there any chance Devin Singletary could be this year's Rashad White? I mean, there's certainly a chance, but I think Devin Singletary will be this year's Devin Singletary. Goes to a new team and, you know, gives you some decent production, but it doesn't feel like he's going to set the world on fire and, and obviously has never done that before, despite leading his team in rushing five years in a row. He's just been, you know, okay in some pretty excellent opportunities. He's solid. He's a solid player. Yeah. Yeah. 13.4 PPR points per game last year when he took over in Houston. That's not bad. I don't know if he can get that. I don't think, I don't even know if he can get to like 11 PPR points with the giants. I don't think he'll be alone. Like he was the main back in Houston. They had no one else. They were going to be he's like a placeholder or one B back to start the year. With New Here, here's a good one. Zamir white or Devin center. Oh, Zamir white. If, if Zamir's the lead guy in Las Vegas, I'm going with Zamir white. Yeah, well, Zamir White. If if Zamir White, look, we got to figure they're going to add someone, right? But let's just have fun with it. If Zamir White were the lead running back in Las Vegas, Zamir White or Tony Pollard? Might be White. Um, Zamir White. It's it's interesting for Pollard. I mean, I, I was really looking for. I wanted him to go back to Dallas. I was I'm hoping for a bounce back for him, like a healthy off season. He can show what he's capable of. But Tajay Spears kind of reminds me of Tony Pollard. I really like both those guys. Spears was so efficient. He had 50 catches last year. I, I don't know. Did I say it on the show with you guys or was it on Beyond the Box score? I think it was you guys. Like, did did they right? Did they make a mistake in riding Derrick Henry, you know, too long and not going with the obviously better back last year? Was I talking about that, about that with you? I don't think so. They were like too loyal. And, oh, I compared it. I, it's funny. I compared it to Zeke and Pollard from 2022. I really thought the Cowboys shot themselves in the foot by giving Zeke too much work and not letting Tony Pollard be the guy. And then but, did, I feel like the Titans did the same thing last year with their running backs. How, how much of that, though, was once the season was over, it was just kind of like the farewell tour for Derrick Henry? I get, well, oh, well I guess like so. When they're out of playoff contention. Yeah, but it, it was the whole season was like that. But yes, I mean, I suppose so. Yeah. Uh, but I was I was hoping for both Spears and Pollard to have to not be on the same team. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to put it that way. Uh, all right, and he, that's pretty much it. Gabe Davis, hooray! Uh, Colby Parkinson to the Rams, three years, twenty two point five million, fifteen point five guaranteed. A lot of money for him. It's an annoying sign, to be honest. Like I wanted to see Davis Allen get an opportunity without Tyler Higby there. And is Noah Fant the last tight end left standing for the Seahawks right now? No, he's a free agent. He's a free agent. He's a free. So, did they cut Disley? Do they have no tight yes, end? They cut Disley. Parkinson's gone. Fant's a free agent. Right. Do, does it matter? They <laughs> use like six different guys anyway. What pick do they have? 20 ish. They're, they're too far down to get Bowers. get Bowers. Oh, and that's what they need. Let's give them Brock Bowers on top of <laughs> Metcalf, Lockett, and JSN. I'm just, I'm just trying to, you know, see if there's any potential of them. Making that move. They're 16th. 
Um, all right, uh, offensive line. So the Giants. Cards, Wilmington. Yeah, the Giants get one of them, the, the worst one. John Runyon to the Giants. He's former Packers lineman, three-year, $30 million deal. Then two bigger ones, Jonah Jackson going from Detroit to the Rams. And Robert Hunt going from the Dolphins to the Panthers, and they desperately need help. Am I missing anything? Those were the two big ones, Jonah Jackson and Robert Hunt. Last guy resigned with Detroit. Right. Uh, Cushenberry to the we Titans. Right, we mentioned that one. I think that's good for Tennessee. Yep. Okay. Well, great. <laughs> yeah. No, that Rams offensive line could be incredibly good next year. Yep. Great for Stafford. Great for Kyron Williams. And uh, Christian Wilkins. Huge. Oh, yeah. I like that one, too, for the Raiders. Right. On defense, the Raiders get Christian Wilkins, former Dolphins defensive tackle. The Dolphins lost a lot in, on their defense. The Commanders are signing former Cowboys defensive end Dorrance Armstrong. Denver signing former Dolphins safety Brandon Jones. Cardinals Leonard signing. Floyd just went to the 49ers. Oh, really? Okay. Yep. Former Raiders defensive tackle Bilal Nichols is going to the Cardinals. Packers Packers with a big splash signing Jacobs and Xavier McKinney. Safety for the Giants. It seemed pretty affordable. I don't know. Whatever. I don't know what they're doing. And then the Vikings. Wow. Jonathan Grenard and Blake Cashman from the Texans. An edge rusher and a linebacker. And then Andrew Van Ginkle. If you watched any Dolphins games, the guy just, he always made plays. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Andrew Van Ginkle going to the, the Vikings. So they've been active. And then the Eagles getting Bryce Huff from the Jets, pass rusher Bryce Huff, who is a guy who like didn't play that much, but when he played was fantastic. So that uh, should help the Eagles up front. That's it. That's all I got. All right. Basically, everyone signed. That'll be our last show of the week. <laughs> Where Henry and Eckler and Ridley, maybe there'll yeah, be a trip. Yeah. Aaron Jones, looking forward to a Justin Fields trade. Get things going here. Where does he go? Where do you want to see him go? I mean, I was hoping for Atlanta. That's out of the mix. Mm -hmm. It'd be great if he went to Minnesota just to see, but they're not going to do it unless Minnesota really goes nuts and overpays. So who still needs a quarterback? Denver, Minnesota, New England, yeah. Washington. You have got to, so yes, you have got to put the Giants on this list. Okay, I still so think you put the Raiders that's the too. list. He said the Raiders. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Raiders make sense, but they just got Minshew. Yeah, but it was two years, twenty-five million. It's not like it's that's backup money. I guess they'd still have to pay Fields and pick up his option next year if they take him. I'd be surprised if the Raiders were the team, and the Vikings will have to pay through the nose. They're in the same division, but if they're the only team stepping up for Fields. I don't know. Chicago's in a tough spot now. Unless. Unless there's a mystery team, like Seattle, for example. Sure. The old mystery team. Mm -hmm. Or Chicago keeps fields, drafts Marvin Harrison, improves the O-line a little bit more. That's a pretty I'm interesting sure. offense. Is asking, when was the last divisional quarterback trade? McNabb to Washington? Question mark. Mm, I don't know. Was that a trade? Yeah. That yeah. I don't know. Quarterback trade. Does that include draft pick trades too? You mean, mean like picks for picks and then one of the teams yeah, drafts a quarterback? No, I, I would mean, say no. No. It's a good question, Schaefer. Stumped us. I saw Schaefer's Facebook profile, by the way. It was recommended that I friend request him. I didn't. But uh, short hair. Short hair, which is weird. I'd never seen him with short hair. <laughs> Very funny caption on one of his pictures too. He's a funny guy. We need, we need more. We need you more didn't shit. friend him, but you stalked him. I did. Yeah, I did. I looked at every picture I could. And <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. That's it. That's it. We got. That's a wrap. We'll talk to you later on fantasy football today.